picking up right where we left off with our renovations in our living room, playroom, and my home office space. And so if you didn't see part one, I highly recommend you go check it out. It explains everything that's happening behind me. So let me catch you up. We had a basement leak. Nate repaired the leak, but we had to rip out the carpet. When we ripped out the carpet, we decided might as well do the whole flooring because we already planned on doing the flooring. Might as well do it because we have to do it anyways. I'm not gonna put new flooring down until I paint these walls. Painting these walls also requires sanding, smoothing out the 1970s panel wall that is on the lower half of the basement down here. In the last video, I did all of that prep work and we are finally getting to beautifying the space. So today's video, we are going to do painting the ceiling, painting the walls. And if you didn't watch my design video, you should also go check that out. But I am doing Swiss coffee. It's this like warm, creamy white um, for the ceiling and the walls. And then down here on the lower half, we are going to be doing the color Garden Vista, which I'm super excited about. In addition to painting this and what we have now smoothed out, um, every 32 inches we are going to be installing a wood detail, giving it like a board and batten sort of look. But I went with a more decorative piece of wood rather than just like your plain wood that you typically see with, with board and batten. So we have some trim work to do. We have some painting to do. We're going to be installing the floors in this video as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so I am going to get started by prepping the space, which is literally just going to be clearing out as much as I can. We have kind of like a drop zone of construction stuff here that needs to be cleaned up. Um, so we're gonna do this. That way we're not tripping over things while we're trying to roll the ceiling. And then as soon as I'm done with cleaning up and getting this all painted, there's a few nail holes here and there throughout the room that I also need to patch up. So I'm gonna get that accomplished as well. You said that you needed me Like a cargo Daddy, bring that chair for you. Alright. I'm going to get this work of art down. Put it somewhere safe. I guess I can't help myself. duck work. Oh, they might not have been super great at taping the drywall seams. Because there are some drywall seams coming apart. Or it's just that old enough what the tape is doing, but we're gonna fix that as we move back. Would you hurt me if I 
to the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't wanna fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no. Just wanna make it stop. Maybe it's something in the water, or maybe we just hit the end of the road. Right now it doesn't even matter. It's too late not to let it go, and that's why I wish you the best and say goodbye. You start to get dressed and then we cry, 'cause we both know it's gonna hurt. But not as much as. So when it came to painting the basement, I did decide to go ahead and try and use my spray gun. And I just wanted to try to get a smoother finish because I was rolling the walls to get a smooth finish. I wanted to also get that smooth finish in the corners. Um, and I think it worked great. Speaking of smooth finish, when I went in and painted the paneling for both the primer that you saw in video one and then also in right what you're seeing here, I used a thicker nap. I used a one and a half inch thick roller and that just gave more paint and a little bit of a texture to the wall. And by little, I mean it's like minimal texture, but it just really helped to smooth any other further imperfections out in the wall um, and blended everything beautifully and really smoothed that paneling out. walls painted guys sorry if it's a little echoey in here um, I am using my mic to hopefully combat that but <sighs> the top has been painted twice the bottom has only been painted once but the coverage was impeccable like absolutely wonderful I don't know if you guys can tell but it doesn't look like 1970s paneling anymore, which is absolutely fantastic and exactly what I wanted. Now we are at the point where we are going to be finally getting everything reassembled in here. What our next step is going to be is getting the trim work put up. So how we're going to accomplish this, I am going to, there's two pieces of trim, um, the original trim, that was here is going to be put up. And then I got a decorative piece um, to go to sit right on top of it just to give it a little more oomph, okay? One thing I noticed about the original trim is the original owner of the house actually installed it technically upside down because most of the time when you do some sort of paneling, it sits out a little bit because you have your drywall and then you're paneling up front. However, because of this split level basement, there's no drywall behind this paneling, which is why I had to do all the work to smooth that, that paneling out. Um, it was going to be the most cost effective thing for us to do rather than re drywall or re panel this whole entire basement. So cost me a tube of silicone as well as some all-purpose joint compound as you guys saw in the previous video. But back to the trim, it was installed with the lip that's on these upside down. The reason being is because then it like catches on that drywall to give it a nice smooth finish. So. What we are going to do, we are still going to install it that way um, rather than turn it upside or turn it the right side up um, where that decorative trim is on top. That's
that's one of the reasons why I bought like a little extra decorative piece to sit on top. So we are going to get this sanded, cleaned, and painted. I am pre-painting it because then I will go in and seal my nail holes and just touch up those areas. It's going to give me a much cleaner finish. Reduces the risk of paint getting up on the top part of the wall, you know, if I was like painting it by hand or anything like that. The other trim is brand new, so I don't need to sand it. I can go straight into painting it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get to trimming this basement out now. So I originally started off trying to hand sand this because I wanted to do a very light scuff sand just to get the shine off so the paint would stick to it. Quickly changed to the orbital sander and just knocked all of this out real quickly. After sanding, I wiped everything down real good with a sponge and just a little bit of water and then Jumping right into the painting, I painted the accent trim that we're adding to the old trim first. Let that dry. Moved it off of my working space, which is an old mattress box, and then, and then went into painting the old trim as well. Alrighty, moving on to the original trim. I did the new trim first. Now, one of the things that really helped me um, or is going to help me be able to put this original trim back is I wrote on the back of each piece when I took it off the wall where it was located like in the room. So we have a big window. I either said like left or right side of the big window, um, wall by the stairs, just some sort of indication to remind me where it went. And I'm hoping that that'll help me place everything back where it goes. So let's, uh, this has been sanded. It has been a couple hours since I wiped it down. So it's definitely nice and dry. Let's get it painted. And all the trim got minimum two coats. I actually did two coats before nailing it up on the wall. And then when I went in with caulk later on down in the video, you'll see I had to do touch ups. So some of the areas actually got three coats of paint. All right, guys, it is time to start getting the trim put up. I'm so excited to finally be doing this. Pay no attention to the little patchwork I had to do. There's still a few spots here or there throughout that just needed like a little bit more smoothing. Um, but when we go to do touch-ups, then I'll be fixing all of that. But let's get some trim hung up. So the I'm using a brad nailer. Now, there are already holes in this from originally being installed, which is kind of nice because that's where the studs are. So I'm literally just going to line everything right up and nail it in.
going to the Home Depot. Depot? Home Depot. <laughs> Guys, it is finally time to lay the floor. Super excited. Uh, we went and picked up the boxes last night from Home Depot Exhibit A. Um, for the whole entire basement, including Nathan's uh, room, we're going to need 32, but we only picked up 28 to get started because that was a pallet. And then we'll go pick up the additional couple boxes that we need later. So, um, we have a buddy that's here helping us. So we've already laid a chalk line down the center of the space to give us a good guideline. And we're gonna start installing the floor. So a couple hours before we started installing the floor, Nate actually went through and any of the spots that needed leveled, uh, he put this self leveling down. You basically had to put a primer and then kind of like squeegee this stuff around the floor and it like literally self leveled. We had to do this along one of the walls and then in addition to where the middle of the room was because they had two different types of flooring down for such a long period of time that it kind of created a groove there so just to smooth all of that to give our vinyl the best chance of not buckling or anything like that over time he took care of that and then after I laid the first row down. Nate and his buddy did most of the flooring. I was outside painting the baseboards or chasing my daughter or chasing our puppy around. So they did an awesome job. I did go in from time to time, see how things were going, help where I could, make some measurements, make some cuts. Um, Nate was doing most of the flooring like down on the ground his friend was doing most of the cuts like I said I was just kind of bouncing in and out and helping where I could and for anybody that is wondering what flooring we went with we actually got the life proof click and lock waterproof luxury vinyl plank flooring in the color lakeside hill oak you can get it at Home Depot. Quite a bit of flooring that we had to do for this large of a space, but turned out beautiful. Guys, I am standing in the back corner, and here is an update. It is day two of putting the flooring in. We got a late start yesterday, but this is what it's looking like. Obviously a little dusty, but that's okay. We'll get that clean. And then the hallway is well underway. Uh, this was a little yacht to cut. Um, this wasn't too bad, but yeah. There's like, you can't even see it, but there's like a thin piece there. But it looks amazing. Um, and then this is also like, look how beautiful that is. So yeah, uh, they're busting their butt. Getting it in. All right guys, it is time to paint what will become the board and batten. I'm so excited. Um, it is beautiful today. So the perfect day to get outside. Emily is gonna be playing. We got a little puppy access behind us as well. Um, and I'm just gonna bust these out. So we've already got the baseboards done. I did that yesterday while Nate was installing the floors. Um, sorry I didn't film that guys, it was a little hectic, I was, it would have been a lot of stop and go, stop and go because chasing the puppy around, chasing my daughter around, helping my husband, painting, it was all over the place. So, 
today we were tackling these um getting these done so then once i get the baseboards installed which will happen in just a little bit i'll get the baseboards installed i can then start cutting these and getting them on the wall so things are happening things are finishing up and i'm so excited decided to replace the paneling around the post in the basement and so we took a quarter inch plywood cut it down into seven and a half inch strips with the table saw that you see us here doing together and then while I ran the wood inside one, two, three, two. ready one two three attitude <laughs> what did you teach her Dude. <laughs> How long were you gone? All right, can you can you show the audience? Oh, I'm pretty sure they saw all of that. Jeez. Once that wood was inside we used the brad nailers and we used the original like template that they had around the post to nail the plywood to um and then nate off camera trimmed it all out we used corner trim for all four corners and then we used the original trim that was already previously there for around the ceiling and around the floor and he also sanded those down beautifully and here in a little bit, I will be staining all of this. I just did but <clears throat> this piece was not a like that's the piece we threw away this piece is usually all the way at the wall so we moved that down because that's already cut on a 45 because that corner is already cut on a 45 so we're putting that piece there this has no 45 cuts despite it being in a corner so we just scooted that down to the middle. I had that piece I was trying to place there because it had a 45 on that angle, but it was too small by like three inches. So we, I took the piece that was there that is actually too long, put it here. It's still too long, but that's okay because then this piece can be scooted down to the corner as well, so I don't need to cut a 45. And then I just need to trim that, and that's already cut on a 45 down there in that corner. So in reality, I'm only cutting like a 12, maybe, maybe 15 inches off of one board. Guys, that's a freaking win! Hopefully the last day 
of renos as far as like getting everything to the point where we can move furniture in so here is what we still have left to do i went around and filled the nail holes um so i have to sand and touch up this i am also going to be caulking this making sure everything is just real nice and clean and smooth caulking the baseboard caulking up here just everything nice and seamless obviously i finished off the corners now too i had extra of these and because they're cut at this angle for the detailing it basically created 245s and so i was able to piece them into the corners i'm going to just caulk that right there it'll make it real nice and seamless in those corners as well rest of the outlets around the room besides the ones that were on the beam I wanted them to match whatever like wall that they were attached to so obviously most of them are going to be on the blue paneling there is a couple in the hallway that will be painted the same color as the trim but for now we're going to focus on the blue ones um, after doing a coat with just the brush I did decide to roll the second coat on with a foam roller just to get it a little bit more smooth and then I took that fine detailing brush on the inside again just to make sure everything was nice and smooth and everything was fully covered so Nate notched these out for me however when I'm going and putting a couple of them in not all of them um, you can see how things just aren't quite square so how we can and he actually measured to make sure everything would be you know fitted properly what you can do is these here give you a little bit of leanway see that so you'll just push it into the position you need it to be top or bottom and then screw that down nice and tight and be able to put it in better. So I need to go over that way. Now it's all flush like it's supposed to be. And we'll put that screw in and call it a day. There it is all screwed in nice and tight. Um, originally I thought about maybe, you know, caulking this in so it's nice and smooth, but ultimately decide not to so we can remove these pretty easily. I think you got a pretty good fit there, so we're happy with it. And with the outlets being the last detail to be installed, here's a reminder of what it looked like when we toured the home and a reminder of what it looked like when we purchased the home and moved in. The original flooring, the paneling, all of the details, completely new, refreshed, and definitely more of mine and Nate's aesthetic. And I could not be happier with how this all turned out. I am going to hide the built-ins in the final footage only because that will be the next video. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that. And without further ado, this is our 2024 basement family room renovations. This is the room complete. But I wanted to show it to you guys like this with nothing in the room. Um, just 
just because I'm super proud of the actual like craftsmanship of the work that we've done in here. Well guys, that is not how I thought we were going to start. So happy that the room has finally come together and I'm excited and anxious for all the little details. I'm sorry it's a little echoey in here, but we are jumping right into the decorate with me, starting with bringing the couch in. I hope you guys enjoyed this long adventure with me today. So this has definitely taught me a ton. I am anxious to do more, but I'm also super tired and I am going to enjoy a week or two of rest. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video in just a few days. You guys have a lovely day and I will see you guys very soon. Yeah. Bye.